Okay, we're going to do some calculations on our heat loss gain now. And you have the same notes page I do, and I'm going to show you basically the same steps you're going to be using later in the activity we're going to do on these notes. So you should write this down, be sure to show all the work as we go through this. So first of all, if we had a wall that had no doors or windows, we'd find the area. If we did have a window in here, we would just find the area and subtract out the window because the window is not part of the wall. So regular area of a regular wall, length times width, or length times height in this case. So length and height is 12 times 8. Feet times feet gives us feet squared, which is 96 feet squared. So first we have to find the area of each wall that we need. Or if we're going to look for a window, we'd also find the area of the windows or the doors or whatever. Step two, if we're talking about a wall, we need to talk about each layer in the wall, how much insulation we're getting from each layer. Because if this is the hot side here, the heat would have to get through this layer, then through this layer, then through this layer, and so on to the outside before it can escape. If we can stop it, we'll keep the heat inside our house. So on this one, where we're looking for the R values, this is where the R value chart comes in. I have a class set of these for you to use. They're on the pink paper, and we're going to reference this chart as we go through this. So what you do is you look at each section of your wall here, and you're going to look it up on your pink chart. So siding, I'm going to zoom out so we can see our chart. You come over here. And we go down this side till we found siding. And we're looking for, here happens to be vinyl siding. And they've actually given us several kinds here. The kind that we're using is this wood bevel. It's going to be 1.05. So you'd look across till you find 1.05. This is in the column per unit, so the siding itself, this kind of siding, 1.05. So we're going to write that down. Then we look at the next one, insulation. And on the notes page, they were a little uh, vague on which kind of insulation, but we're going to use the blanket batting fiberglass insulation. And we're going to say that this insulation, we put it in at 4.33 inches of insulation in there. So what we have to do, and we have to know how wide the insulation is so that we can do the calculation. We're going to use the 3.0 value. So whenever it's in this column where it says per inch, we have to multiply that number times how many inches are, there are in the wall. Because the thicker the insulation layer, the more insulation you're going to get from it. That should make sense. If it's in this column over here, the per unit, like our siding was, then we just use that number flat out. So for our insulation, we're going to use the 3.0 number. I'm going to kind of make a little note over here. 3.0 times how thick it is, 4.33 inches. And we're going to get that the insulation, when we put that in our calculator, is 13.00. Then our drywall, we're going to look up on our table here. Look down, look down. Here we go. Gypsum wall board or drywall. 0.9 per inch. And they didn't tell us on here, but I know that this is 3 quarter inch drywall. So we're going to use 0.9 times 3 quarters of an inch drywall. I'm going to make a little note here so you should write your notes down. 0.9 from the table times 3 quarters inch drywall will get us 0 0.68. Inside air film. Inside air film. Basically what happens is inside the room, Air actually makes a very good insulation. That's why you sometimes see double-paned windows with uh, two panes of glass with air in between it. 
because air actually makes a very good insulator. What they're saying is the very thin section of air just inside the wall adds a little bit to our R value. So we just look right here inside air film 0.68. So we're going to add that total right here. So here's our numbers for our layers of uh, materials on our wall. And you just add those up on your calculator and you get 15.41. Now you might think, what are the units for this? Well, our R value units come out to be feet squared, because it had to do with the area, per hour, or hours, degrees Fahrenheit, over BTUs. These units are important because these are the units that we're going to then be able to use in future calculations and it'll make our units work out properly. Okay, that's to find the R value. Then you'll be asked to find the U factor. This is super easy. U factor is just 1 over the R value. The only trick on this is that you should not round it down. I'm sorry, you should not round it up. Do not round it up. So I take 1 over 15.41, put it into my calculator, and we get 0 0.064. And if I do 1 over R, what happens to my units here? The units just flip over, so I have BTUs over feet squared, hours, degrees Fahrenheit. And that's my U factor. Make a little note here, do not round up. All right, now you have to go to a table to look up the information. And I've given you the link to this table online when you do this yourself. But here's a little snippet from this table. And I'm going to zoom in so you can read it a little bit better. What if we wanted to design something to go in Worcester, Massachusetts, or somewhere very close to Worcester, Massachusetts? What they've done is they've gone in and calculated the temperature every day of the year in these cities, in these states, and they calculated up statistically what's the chance. So this column right here, which is what we're going to use for winter, this column where it says 97 and a half, this is what it's saying. That 97 and a half value has been exceeded, this value here, so 4 degrees here, has been exceeded 97.5% of the year. So 98% of the year, it's warmer than 4 degrees. So we're going to assume that the coldest we need to deal with is 4 degrees. That extra 2.5% two two of the year when it gets colder than this, we're not going to worry about those two days because those two days, they're going to wear extra sweaters or whatever. But most of the time, 98% of the time, it's warmer than this number. That's what that says. Then this column is for summer, and this dry bulb, wet bulb, it's just because if you actually wet the bulb of a thermometer, it gives a different number. So we use this dry one. And here we're saying that a two, this value right here, 84 degrees, it only gets hotter than that 2.5% of the year. So most of the year, it's between these two values. There's only 2.5% that it's lower than this, only 2.5% that it's higher than this in Worcester, Massachusetts. So most of the time, we don't need to worry about it getting hotter than this. That's what these two values are, are talking about. So we're going to use this one right here for our calculations, the winter one, because we're going to be heating up our shed when we get to the activity, and we're going to do that here too. And they're going to tell us the design temperature we want. Here they're telling us we want to make a design temperature for inside the shed to stay at 68 degrees. You'll always be given what we want to design for. So then a difference, or a differential, or a difference, we just subtract things. Delta, you'll remember from POE, means just take and take the subtraction of the two items there. So we take the temperature we got in our, over here, 4 degrees, and we subtract it from our design temperature. And we get that our delta T is going to be 64 degrees. So this one's from the table. 
this one's given. Then we do our total heat loss calculation. Q always stands for heat loss. A is the area. U is our U factor we found, and delta T we just found here. This formula and what all these variables are is in your formula chart. So now we're just going to plug this information in. So I had my area was 96 feet over there. My U factor was right here. So I'm going to write it down. And I'm going to write all the units down so you see how the units work. And then my delta T was right here. And that was in Fahrenheit. So I'm going to show you the units part. This feet squared here cancels with this feet squared on bottom there. This degrees Fahrenheit cancels with that degrees Fahrenheit. Leaving us with units of BTUs over hours. So this is going to be, when we do this calculation, how many BTUs of energy we use, or how many BTUs of temperature energy we use every hour that we have our, our area heated. So in this case, we put it all in our calculator, multiply, 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 and we get 393.2 BTUs of hour per hour is how much heat we're losing through this wall in the winter. And that's all there is to these calculations.